Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ancient Roman Trading Secrets with General Romulus. That's me, Romulus. Once again, this show is brought to you by Backpack Trader. Our goal is to help you become the best version of the Backpack Trader you can possibly become. And speaking of backpack tradering, that's right, that's a new term that my partner TJ just came up with. You have got to see this cool picture. Here is TJ just yesterday backpacking through Argentina. And even when he's out there traveling the world, look at that, he's doing some trades and then going off gallivanting around the great city. No, he's not actually backpacking. He doesn't do that anymore. It's more Airbnbs and the nicer hotels of the world, but the concept is the same. It doesn't matter if you want to do your trading literally from a camping tent from poolside on the beach at a fine hotel in Argentina or on a rail express racing through Europe. We want to help you get to where you want to be with that. Yesterday, I told you we were going to discuss a well-known company, at least of the uh, meme stock trading generation, a company called SoFi. It's a bank. They're targeting their business more toward a uh, younger generation of investors and uh, traders and savers and consumers out in the world. And again, the stock was a big favorite, hit an all-time high. That wasn't even the all-time high. You can see way back here, February 2021, 28 bucks a share. That was the same time when all the meme stocks and the SPACs and all these companies hit their all-time highs. And then, well, we know the blood is just continuing to flow just all over the uh, the meme stock and SPAC type of a world. But there might be something going on in SoFi that is very much worth our time and attention. Let's take a look. So stock trading at a new all-time low a couple of weeks ago at under $5 a share coming off of that $28 high from uh, 2021. But what do you think about this? Since March, as in just a few months ago, there has been an awful lot of insider purchasing going on. Okay, insider. By the way, corporate executives, people who run these companies, they have the legal right to buy and sell their own company stock. There are some limitations uh, that you and I don't have. However, they are conducting open market purchases in this case. That's what we're looking for. This is a list of stock purchases and sales that has gone on in SoFi over the last couple of years. And note that since March, just a few months ago, every couple of weeks, the CEO, Anthony, I don't know if it's Anthony Noto or Anthony Nolo, but anyway, Anthony, CEO Anthony, every few weeks buys the stock. Started in March, 996 a share. A bit later, 973. Then he keeps going at 895. Then he's at seven and eight dollars. Then he's at nine dollars again. And there's some other executives as well. He's not the only one. Here's the head of operations. Bought 5,000 shares there. Bought 5,000 shares a couple of months ago. Here's another director getting 10,000 shares. Uh, here's another director getting 15,000 shares. When you see, when I see this kind of activity, especially concentrating in a stock that has been hammered, whereas there's a lot of insider buying going on. It's not just one person. It's not just one executive. It's spread out maybe a little bit around the uh, the C-suite, and they're buying every couple. Something's happening over here. Now, I don't believe that the bear market is over, okay? Let's take the S&P 500, the low that was hit just here back on May 20th, uh, on May 20th, 3810. I don't believe that's the ultimate low of this bear market. It may be the low for a while. We are rallying right now after all. And sometimes these rallies can last a couple of weeks. You saw over here, this low on March 14th was not exceeded really until all the way back on April 29th. So it was about a month and a half. Something like that could easily be in the works right now. However, between now and the end of September, I do believe that that low of 38.10 will be punctured and punctured with some strength and vigor. However, SoFi, perhaps it's possible that the stock is bottomed. We see the insider buying going on in here. Now, I wouldn't rush out there and buy the stock aggressively or in some, any kind of a size just because I see a lot of insiders buying it. Why? Because just like stocks top out at different times, for example, the S&P 500 hit its all-time high right there on January 4th. However, the communication sector topped out on September 2nd. The NASDAQ topped out in the middle of, whoops, I'm sorry, the middle of, uh, I'm sorry, late November. The Russell 2000 topped out in early November. Stocks top out at different times. They bottom out at different times as well. Go back and look at the uh, dot-com crash. NASDAQ top, uh, bottomed in late November of 02, S&P Dow a couple of months later in early March of 03. 
However, Amazon stock bottomed in September, October of 2001, about 13, 14 months before the rest of the NASDAQ and almost a year and a half before the rest of the stock market itself. However, I'm looking to concentrate my firepower and put my capital, not just my actual capital, but also my emotional and mental capital at the place that can do me the most good and cause me the least amount of angst. Okay, I'm looking to trade and invest successfully with as little emotional and uh, mental stress as possible. It's always there, of course. I mean, anytime you're doing anything that could produce uh, good returns, there's going to be some stresses in the system. However, I'm trying to minimize that as much as I can. And therefore, I want to concentrate my efforts with the larger trend. The larger trend is still down. The stock market is still in a confirmed downtrend. And it will remain that way, oh, could be weeks, months, could even be a year or two. Okay, this could be coming with us for quite some time. However, SoFi possibly pulls off an Amazon from 2001 and two, where it bottomed prior to the rest of the stock market. I might say, yes, if someone puts a little bit of money, just a little tiny bit of money into a company like this now, buying alongside all of these insiders, I might say that could make some sense. But don't go any, any large commitments. Okay, These insiders, their timing could be awful. And that's, by the way, very typical of insider buying activity. Their timing is, is just not that great. It's very, very blunt instrument. However, Anthony could be thinking, hey, I don't mind. I have enough money today, but I want to get super rich in four or five years from now. Well, that's what is what could he, he could be holding on for. And maybe the stock doesn't see that sub $5 level ever again. It's possible that it doesn't, but it could go to 10. And then when selling comes back into the stock market with aggression and brings the S&P 500 down another 10 or 15 or 20% from here. So if I stock could drop another 20% again and go back to $8 a share. And it just keeps doing that and doing that. The best time to buy in bulk, in size, and aggressively these types of companies is when the stock market itself is at or close to its ultimate bear market lows. However, there is something interesting going on in this company. A lot of insider buying. I haven't looked at all 3,700 stocks that trade on the major U.S. exchanges, but I'll bet, this is just a gut instinct of mine, I will bet there's heavier insider buying going on in SoFi right now than just about any other company out there. So CEO Anthony, and I apologize if I haven't said your last name properly. Uh, again, apologies for that. CEO Anthony, my hat's off to you. I, uh, I applaud the bold moves out there. You probably know something the rest of us don't. And good for you. Someone wants to buy alongside this CEO? Makes sense to me. Just be very careful and go a little bit light for right now. The rest of the stock market in rally mode right now, up almost 7% from the May 20th lows. You can see that right there. Another problem though, and we keep highlighting this again and again, where is that volume? Again, if the bargains were so great, if the buyers are so aggressive, if this was indeed a bear market low, where is that volume? Again, this is, keeps happening. Look at the video that we posted a couple of weeks ago titled Dead Cat Bounce. It's the same pattern. Markets rally, sure. This was a nice rally, 11% over two weeks. So far eclipsing uh, this one here in percentage gains and, and uh, returns. But again, where was the volume? As soon as the markets start picking up, the volume disappears. And then we get a couple of down days and the volume comes right on back. People are selling every rally. Maybe not every single day, but you get the idea. They're selling every rally. And that is something to be extremely careful about going forward. Now, there's reasons, of course. I, per I personally don't spend a lot of time on the why. I like to pref uh, I prefer to talk about and think about and concentrate on the what's next. But this was really triggered by interest rates kind of uh, dissipating a little bit and slowing down. My centurions got the message on this one in uh, early April that the rate of ascent on the interest rate market was going to be slowing down quite a bit. And some of them were even able to take some nice profitable opportunity trades in that situation. You can see here's the 10-year pulling. Uh, remember what I said? This looks like a little bit of a, of a head and shoulders in here. That measures down to about two and a half or so right around in here. And even if that were to trigger back down to, uh, to two and a half percent, that still doesn't mean that this interest rate move is all the way over. More likely than not, the ascent that we've seen over the past year and a half, the rate of ascent is not going to repeat itself. But there's a high probability that between now and the end of this calendar year, the all-time, uh, the multi-year high of 3.2% will be eclipsed on the upside. So rates still going higher. Just the rate of ascent starts to dramatically slow down. 
I wanted to read a great note to you that I received from one of my centurions just yesterday. He posted it on our YouTube channel. You can check this one out yourself. Uh, Ron and I have been doing business for uh, for a bit here. Ramos, thanks for all you do. Been a great run so far. You are the expert that you say you are. Both of my accounts are up over 10% this year. Let's stop right there. He's up over 10% this year. My goodness. Now, Ron has a great job. He's a uh, highly qualified, experienced, and skilled uh, professional. However, Ron, you're up over 10% this year. S&P 500 is down about 17 16%. If you wanted a job on Wall Street, a lot of people would hire you, and they pay you big bucks for that. That is ridiculous, everybody. Absolutely ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Uh, great call on the top, and he feels extremely confident that we'll be spot on when we hit the bottom, whether it's a week, a month, or a year. And he's expressing uh, a great level of patience in there and an understanding of how to really operate in the markets. You can make money. You can make money. By the time he's done with the year, he'll be up 25 30 35%, which means he's beating Warren Buffett's numbers, and he's doing it with uh, calm, without a lot of uh, mental and emotional uh, commitment over there. Just fantastic stuff. Okay, well, I live near the city of Indianapolis, which means Memorial Day is our biggest weekend of the year. That's right. The Indianapolis 500 is coming up in a couple of days. There's going to be a lot of uh, parties and festivities and celebrations. I plan on taking part in a couple of uh, those myself. This is the modern version of a chariot race, everybody. You know Ben-Hur, right? As a matter of fact, your old buddy Romulus, I'm hopping on my chariot, heading back to ancient Rome right now. I wish everybody a wonderful start to their uh, the official start to the summer. Enjoy the weekend, and let's see each other in the very near future. I'm going back to ancient Rome. That's all for now.